How's it going, Lone Riders? Let's talk about the world's best foot pick. So in the last video, we talked about how we developed the foot peg to where it is now. So go back and check that if you haven't seen it. We thought that it was impossible to put everybody's needs into one, one peg, but we going in the right direction. Um, so what we got to was we only really got to the point of having a, it fits most adventure bikes um, and it's got removable teeth. All these other points to make it the world's best foot peg, I say it's the world's best foot peg because you know, it, it does a lot more than most foot pegs on the market. This is where we left off last time for this jump into the computer. Quite a few things we need to work on, so let's have a look. So the first thing I wanted to do was look at the size. What's the correct size? So I did a lot of research on the average shoe size in the US or around the world as well, this is just an example. Um, and yeah, the average shoe size was in the height of the person and the shoe size. And this is the average, um, and the results came back is between 9.5 to 12.5. So yeah, a, a range down there. So we're looking at that shoe size to, to figure out the, the width um, and also the, all, the, all the constraints that we work around because that's in fact the only point of the body that the product connects to. Um, we also looked at this uh, website from Excel Avid, pretty cool, thanks for putting this up and it just gives you a rundown of the costs and the sizes and what it's made out of um, notes and stuff like this. Um, and we put that all together into one system and um, decided on kind of like where we want it to be. So we didn't want to go too small because there's no point, people need a little bit more than the OEM ones. Um, and we didn't want to go too big either because they get in the way in the trails and they also uh, feedback from riders and stuff like this said, yeah, we, we don't want a huge peg. We want a peg that is comfortable, that we can pivot on, ro rotate our ball of our foot on and stuff like this and have a kind of way more control over the bike. The bigger it is, the less feeling you can have on the pegs. So this is what we decided on. We decided on 60 by 140 mils. Um, or 104 mils, excuse me, uh, and we found through testing that that was the best possible size for a peg. It's much more comfortable. Uh, another thing that we needed to introduce was rotation because people wanted to have access to, or oh, for many reasons, but people wanted to have access to the gears and the brakes better. They had bad knees and they wanted a bit more or less um, vibration coming through. So that's what we worked on in this one as well. So we developed a new system for a rotation rotational foot peg. Also, they wanted to change the height. We built in kind of like an eccentric, so we can drop the height. We can actually move it into like 17 different positions, I think, or around 17, 18. So that's what we did in this as well. So yeah, we also introduced a spider, like some rubber in there, so give it a bit more padding and give it that rotational effect. Um, and so this is that was the final concept that we got to um, before we started really print, uh, doing prototypes and stuff. Um, we had three positions of movement. Uh, it was an anti-vibration system. It, um, it, 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 it's movable, it rotates, um, and it is adapted that we can fit to most bikes as well. So we can like do the KTMs, the BMWs, the ATs, the T7s, all those bikes, the Triumphs as well, even the HDs. And we did lots of other small improvements on this prototype as well. Uh, the concept is with the eccentrics that it's basically uh, a spacer. So the concept was that we could adjust it by 18 and plus 18 and minus 18. What we've really found out so far that most people just want to lower it. Um, that's, that's about it. They don't really want to move towards it or back from the, the controls. But if you do have a preference, let me know in the comments down below. So we worked on the design as well, and this, we wanted to make it a bit more aggressive and a bit more adventure looking, um, but also function perfectly. So it was a nice balance that we had to hit between, um, that's why we opened up the middle here and uh, we, we decided on making it aluminium, solid aluminium. Uh, we can just see and see that out. It gives a lot of, um, it's quite light, um, but it's very strong and we can basically manipulate the material to what we want as well. So we can, you know, we can really make it look good, but also function really well. So it's the design, uh, first round concept of the design. So what we did, we found out that having the rubber on the outside was causing problems and it just exposed it to the elements. So we made it go internal. So what we figured out um, is that we need to make it internal because then we can use itself, its walls and everything inside hidden to make it move um, and squash and we can really control what's going on with the rotation and the movement inside. So we, that's another major improvement here. Um, so from you looking at it from the outside, you don't actually know it's that it can actually do anything. Um, this is the was basically the 
the final concept that we came up with in V2, essentially. If you see here, I've like uh, hidden the parts, made them transparent so you can actually see what's going on there. There's four kind of like pins that we put in there uh, and then you can change the shore on that. Uh, the shore means basically how soft it is or hard it is. So what we did was we tested, so I ordered this, these um, shore, different shores here, there's different, different types of rubber to test which ones work uh, and then we came up with essentially a huge list of options. So there's a soft option so you can have a lot of flexibility. Uh, there's a medium option which is like kind of just a bit harder than soft and that's the factory settings that will come, we'll, we'll assemble it with medium in there and then there's hard which is it's harder it's for for the bigger guys like um for me as well like medium to hard is good for my weight and soft gives you a lot more um a lot more rotational movement there up to 20 degrees um, and then you can actually and then there's also a fix a fixed option the fixed option is essentially because we found out that a lot of people with these pegs that do move um, we're not happy with them some of them were not happy with them so what they did was they just put took them off the bike and put them on the shelf so we didn't want to have that to happen so what we do is we add in um, a fixed option so if they're not happy or they don't find exactly what they they like with the the movement on the peg they can just put these uh, fixed options in and it's just a normal fixed Foot peg. It's just got the bigger platform and the better, better teeth grip and stuff like this. Then we've got sand riding and what options for riding. So for me, I've got a bad right knee. I came off my bike in Cambodia and I uh, blew out my knee. So I like I, got, I like to have a bit more angle on my foot there. So what I do is have a bit of a soft in the front and medium in the back. Uh, if you're riding sand, for example, you want to be back on your bike quite a bit. So what you can do is you can actually just put soft at the back and medium or hard at the front. So you can get that control when you're on front of the bike and then that nice soft um, angle back so you can lean back into the bike with the soft pins. A better access control that kind of means that you can put soft at the front of your pegs so you can get to the gears easier and to the brake easier but you can put hard at the back so you can have that, um, that firm platform to, to ride on and then um, then you can actually mix them up as well so if you want something between soft and medium then you can put a soft in there uh, and a medium and it'll give you like a half half so this is um, I haven't got this translated that's why it says hard 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 this will be translated into German French and yeah Spanish so that's what that is for so pretty cool, pretty innovative in a way, you know, you can really customize it to what you want. We were also looking at the rubber inserts and um, first I designed something that was kind of, you know, you had to screw in there because it needed to be fixed in there. Um, feedback from everyone is saying, yeah, that's great. Uh, we don't want it to pop out, but it sucks. We don't want to get under the bike after a hard day trailing, uh, all dirty and sweaty and hot, and then have to get up there with small screws and like remove the rubber or add the rubber on. So the concept was that we, um, you know, plug it in. Basically, this was the first concept for the rubber. It looked like a bit of a chocolate bar. This is the second concept with it. I don't know. Oh, there it is. We didn't really like the chocolate bar concept and the idea, so um, we went into kind of like a honeycomb. It gives you grip in six directions as well. So this was just the design process I went through. So I started very simple and then I moved it. The design went way out into actual finished product. And that's the finished product there. Uh, yeah, I tested it as well. Really good, uh, really strong uh, and grippy as well. So that's the final uh, rubber insert design, uh, and that's it there as well. It's um, you can actually it's in there now, but uh, you can actually just remove it as well. You can just take take you can actually just take it out and put it back in, which is pretty cool. So the teeth design was a bit of a discussion with everybody. We've got some pretty skilled riders in the um, group and they all have their own opinions. Um, so there was a different options. Uh, we ended up work going for this classic round design here because it gave us the, the perfect balance between destroying boots and grip. Uh, and yeah, this is my leg. I, yeah, I'd say that it's um, a lot of blood, sweat and tears gone into this product, uh, literally. And uh, yeah, they're quite sharp. So uh, it is good to have the rubber insert. You can see that's the actual sample, the rubber insert there um, on there. And uh, yeah, it gives you a lot of grip. So yeah, what we did was uh, started printing it out. We had to do a final couple of um, 3D prints before we went into the hard models. Like we did a lot of testing before we actually CNC it out of aluminium uh, just to make sure everything works perfectly so we can do ride tests. Because at the moment with this 3D printing here, you can't stand on it. A few minor adjustments. Uh, just to make it small like for example this one one change here reduces the material by like 15 percent which is a huge cost saving with, that we can pass on 
and weight. So yeah, we started uh, with aluminium and uh, we used 5 axis CNC machine and we essentially built it, um, built a working prototype. So after testing it, we read it, I drove it around, uh, we found out that the rotation concept does not work. We failed, we needed to refine it much, much more. It was kind of steppy and it was hard to, actually, it didn't actually, it wasn't smooth. So we had to work on that. Um, fitment to the bike was perfect and also the size, a way better control over the bike, it felt way more comfortable. Uh, what, what wasn't working is the machining tolerances, um, but that was a specific issue with the CNC machine. The bending of the, the teeth was a bit out, pretty hard to, and to get the accuracy if we're going to mass produce this thing. So that's what we learned from it, um, essentially. Uh, yeah, so that's what we learned from the first one we had to develop from this. So we got, we got quite far, but it's actually a failed project so far. So we had to put a bit more work in to try and get that rotational feature working. So yeah, at this point we got the tested size perfect. We really, we're really happy with the size of it. Um, that's 60 by 104 mil. The rubber insert for boot protection, we ticked that off the box and we made it so it's removable just with your hands, no tools needed. Um, and extremely grippy with the six, six directional um, pattern on there. Um, removable teeth so we can upgrade them or downgrade them um, per aggressiveness so we can upgrade them or to something more aggressive or a bit make them a bit more placid and a bit more rounded a bit more soft. Um, Anti-vibration system we did this with the rubber insight um, and also with the rotation right, rotational blocker which is the point where people can convert them to fixed pegs if they don't like the rotation part of it and the rotational foot peg part of it. It failed essentially. It worked but it failed. I mean you can't, you can't send that out. People wouldn't be happy. Um, slick design, yeah, we started that but it wasn't perfect. So um, that, that's not done yet or the adaptable position so moving it up or down. Um, that wasn't working as well. But that's it so far. So next week we'll tell you how we solved the problem with the rotational foot peg part of it um, and what solutions we came up with and how we made that better. So if you like what you're seeing, make sure you do subscribe um, and leave us a comment about anything that we've talked about uh, today and I'll catch you soon.